Mary Anning's Curiosity, Chapter 10, The Great and Terrible Lizard. For months, Mary watched and waited. If wild storms came when you wished for them, the coastline would have been pummeled hundreds of times over, for Mary made that wish each day. But the storms that smashed the coast that winter didn't uncover the body that was buried deep in the cliff. Mary went fossil hunting every day and returned with the usual curiosities, but not a shred of good news. Perhaps she'd been wrong about the creature's body. Perhaps it was only the skull that was to be her great discovery. Ma tried to be encouraging. It will happen, she said, if it's meant to be. Then came a winter storm that lasted for days and had everyone worried for their safety. Gigantic waves bashed and battered the cliffs, drenching the houses that stood near them. Many quaked in their homes. Sure, they'd be washed out to sea, but not Mary. Her spirits rose as her hope was renewed. She could hardly wait for the blow to end. At the first calm down, Mary excitedly tramped down to church cliffs. The sea glimmered in the morning light and gulls shrieked their greetings. Mary breathed in the tangy sea air. It was wonderful to know where she belonged. Mary tromped steadfastly eastward. When she reached the spot where the skull had been, she slowly scanned the limestone ledges and the bands of shale of the blue lias. She sought out places where crumbling layers had been washed away by smashing waves to reveal what was underneath. Mary was searching for the slightest hint of the creature's spine. As Mary scoured the cliff, she thought of the book Miss Philpot had shown her. A French natural scientist named Georges Cuvier had written it. Cuvier studied living animals and compared their skeletons to those of fossilized creatures, and the book was filled with his drawings. Mary immediately noticed that Cuvier's drawing of a crocodile skull didn't match the skull she'd uncovered. The snout wasn't right. The eye was too large. So what kind of creature was buried in the cliff? Suddenly, Mary saw a ridge of humps in the limestone. Were these the beginning of the creature's spine? Mary scraped at the mud and shale, uncovering a long line of bumps that could only belong to a spine. She'd been right. When it died, the sea creature's head and body had separated. The body was a little higher up from where Mary had excavated the skull. The monster fossil lay waiting to be freed from the cliffs, and what a monster it was! Ahoy there, young Mary! shouted a familiar voice. What have you found? Oh no, thought Mary. How could I let him creep up on me? Captain Curie was banging down the beach, balancing on slippery rocks with the expert use of his spade. When he finally reached Mary and saw what she'd been staring at, he gave a long, low whistle. So you've beat me to the beast. I have, Mary replied. Just so you know, it's mine. I knew you'd be the one to find it, for you'd be the miracle girl, isn't it right? What do you know about that? Mary asked quickly. She didn't like being reminded of the day three women were struck dead and she was spared. It sent shivers through her. The curiosity man gave Mary a rare smile. His teeth were all but gone. The ones that remained were brown with rot. All the same, smile made him look years younger. I was present on the day that bolt struck you and the three ladies nestled under the elm. The lightning strike felled the women, but not you, a oh wee babe. Oh no, not you. You were being spared for this day. I knew you'd make a name for yourself. Mary was uneasy. Why should this man, who'd stolen many a fine fossil from her since Pa had died, be speaking like a friend? Mary was happy she had the beast, it was true, but her achievement felt hollow without Pa there to share her happiness. She couldn't show pride in Mary's hard work, which she would have done if he'd been alive. And now, to top it off, Captain Curry was being nice to her? The world had turned on its head. You think my kindness be a trick, young Mary? asked the captain, his eyes warm and watery. Well, there's only the one trick. I'm old now and don't wish to die with an enemy standing at my grave. Mary accepted the captain's words and together they stood awestruck by the outline in the cliff. Finally, the captain spoke. What is this great beast, I wonder? It's a sea reptile for certain, said Mary thoughtfully. A giant swimming creature, but not a crocodile. And you're certain of this because... Because of the French scientist book Miss Philpot showed me? I see, replied the captain. May happy be right. When the rest of Lyme Regis found out what Mary had discovered, you'd have thought the King of England was coming to visit. There was that much excitement. The Day brothers built a stronger, higher platform so Mary could stand at the height of the bones to do her work. Joe helped when he could. Ma and Miss Philpot were excited too and often brought Mary hot tea and crumpets to encourage the young fossil hunter. People who hadn't been to the beach in years came down to see young Mary Anning at work. Even Anne, impressed, 
came to see what her friend had discovered. It's a frightful thing, she murmured. You're amazing to have found it. But Mary was chip, chip, chipping away and didn't hear her friend's words. After that day, Anne never came back to the beach, for the creature frightened her. The daily work of hammering at shale and rock to bring the creature closer to the light rested on Mary's shoulders, and she accepted the responsibility without complaint. Each day she came down to the shore with a light heart, knowing she was going to uncover more of the creature. She imagined it might be like working on a sculpture, watching rock take on a new shape under her hand. What would her chisel uncover today? What would the creature look like when she finished? On cold, blowy days, Mary secured herself to the platform with Pa's belt. She wore gloves with the tips of the fingers cut off so she could feel the fossil buried in the stone and not damage any of the fragile bones. Because Mary had found the creature within a year from the time she found the skull, Lauren Henley let her finish the job of freeing the great and terrible lizard from its grave. Mary worked for months. Her hands grew rough and red, but Ma didn't say a word. She just rubbed Miss Philpott's cream on them each night. Finally, the day came when the creature's entire body was revealed. The beast was ready to be removed. Once more, the Day brothers cut large blocks in which the fossil was embedded. They brought the pieces to the fossil shop. When the bones were clean, Mary varnished them. When she had been carving the creature out of the cliff, Mary had kept the curiosity damp with wet sand. Now, indoors, the varnish Pa had used for his wood pieces would stop air from drying it out. The limestone slabs were cemented into another frame built by Joe, and Mary added a skim of lime plaster to set the bones and make the finish appear smooth. The beast was ready. Mary stood back to admire her work. The large creature had paddles instead of legs, and its tail had an odd little kink in it. It was 30 feet long from the tip of its snout to the end of its tail. It lay across the workshop, through the hall, and partway into the kitchen. Molly was looking forward to having the creature gone. Your pa would be so proud of you, Mary, she said, on the day Lord Henley was to pick it up. To think a mere lass, with little schooling, did what those great scientists do all the time, and all of them big men mind. It boggles my mind, it does. I can't help but wonder what else you are destined to do. I agree with your mother, added, added Miss Philpot who come over to see the fossil off. You have what it takes to find many much more such wonderful creatures. The squire pulled up his rack bed wagon, which was used for hauling heavy loads. Ace and Abby are the only horses strong enough to pull this weight, he said once the Day brothers and Joe had managed to wrangle the beast on board. Here's your money, Molly, minus the rent you owe me, said Lord Henley, giving Molly a wad of large banknotes. You did fine work, Mary. Keep me in mind should you find another beastie. With the tip of his hat, the squire was gone, and with him, Mary's curiosity. Through the many months of hard work, Mary had come to call the creature her own, and now it was gone. Her heart felt empty and sad at its loss. There are no other beasties to be found, she murmured sadly. You don't know that for certain, Mary, said Miss Philpot. There may be many, many more. We live in a world filled with mystery. Mary smiled. Of that, she was certain. <laughs>